Okay, so let's talk about a few things for this module one exam. Uh, just to recap over a few things on the study guide. You guys have received the study guide. I just want you to use this video to kind of answer some of the questions uh, that are put on the study guide. So what different types of moves of patients are there? Well, there's emergent, urgent, and non-urgent moves. And what move would we use on a cardiac arrest patient would be an emergent move. Emergent moves are moves where we'll grab under the shoulders, we'll grab anything that we can and pull with the long axis of the body. And uh, we move them where we can work on them. Okay, And that's usually in a cardiac arrest situation or a immediate life threat. However, an urgent move is we move someone so that we can do a procedure that they need uh, to survive. And then finally, a non-urgent move is just moving someone on a stair chair out to the cot or to the ambulance. Okay, what's a closed-ended question? A closed-ended question is something that has a yes or no response or a single word response. Whereas an open-ended question, if I said to you, uh, what is your favorite color? Um, or uh, how are you doing today? There are various forms of responses you might give me. Um, why do we explain all procedures to patients? Number 13, we explain all procedures to the patients so that they understand what they're getting into and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, what is an emergency medical dispatcher? Well, that's the EMD in number 19. And what do they do? They get us the critical information so that um, the EMTs, AEMTs, paramedics can provide life-saving care uh, to those in need. What kind of past medical history is emphysema? Well, emphysema is a past medical history dealing with the respiratory side. Whereas if it was something dealing with the heart, it would deal with cardiac and so on and so forth. Aspirin, nitro, and glucose on number 22. Aspirin, nitro, and glucose are medications. Aspirin is a uh, platelet inhibitor. Um, it doesn't break up clots, but it inhibits the platelets from forming more clots. Uh, nitro is a coronary vasodilator, so it dilates the coronary vessels. And uh, we don't want to give it to somebody who has a blood pressure under 100, uh, who's taken erectile dysfunction meds. And uh, glucose. Glucose is what we give to hypoglycemic patients and we use glucose in situations where we need to bring their sugar up. So with that in mind, they have to be alert and able to swallow for us to give them oral glucose. If they can follow simple commands and able to swallow, we can give them oral glucose. If they can't swallow and they can't follow simple commands, then oral glucose is contraindicated. All right, uh, four types of shock. There's cardiogenic, obstructive, uh, distributive, and hypovolemic. The three stages are compensated, decompensated, and irreversible. The way I remember that is CDs, compensated, decompensated, sayonara. Irreversible is death, so sayonara means see ya later. So uh, if we don't get them back by irreversible, we're going to see ya later. Um, what are the types of consent? Those are implied, expressed. Uh, so dealing with children, if they're in a medical emergency, we're going to go with implied uh, consent. What types of disinfectant on there? There, there are low-level, mid-level, and high-level disinfectants. Our low-level is kind of your alcohol wipes that you're going to be using in the ambulance or a 1 to 100 bleach water. Um, high level is usually hydrogen peroxide and bleach or some type of manufactured chemical. Sterilization, we have to use heat. And medium level is where we'll use a uh, bleach uh, compound again uh, with water or also an alcohol type substance. Uh, those are dealing with blood and uh, most infections is those mid-level disinfectants. Okay, um, the differences between a child and adult's airway a child has a much bigger head mass for its body size. Uh, the airway is more cone shaped where the adults is more cylinder. Uh, they have a bigger tongue and they have a floppy tongue. They have a floppy epiglottis uh, so they can have aspirations a lot easier. And the most common airway obstruction is the tongue. 
How would you deal with a language barrier in EMS number 44? You would deal with a language barrier in EMS by uh, either getting a translator, translator service, or if maybe they're deaf and they're unable to uh, communicate with words uh, or they're mute, have them write down on a piece of paper what they're trying to say and communicate with a piece of paper. And the medical term for blood is hemo. All right, so we're just using the affix of the word hemo to describe blood. So if we said hemoneumothorax, thorax would be chest, pneumo would be air, hemo would be blood. Um, where do the nerves that control the diaphragm exit the central nervous system? Uh, they exit around C2. Uh, so if you had a thoracic injury to your spinal cord or a lumbar injury, it wouldn't affect your diaphragm. Uh, the peritoneal layer of tissue is located in the abdomen. It covers all of our organs there. And rib bones are flat bones. Uh, that's a very important thing for this exam. And the three components the brain needs to survive is oxygen, glucose, and water. So make sure that you guys have got those things down. Um, you know, I'll be happy to answer any other questions that come up. Uh, but I hope this, this helps with the study guide. Uh, for the module one exam and kind of just a little bit of a um, extra um, support before you guys go take it. Uh, good luck and study hard. Have a good weekend.